Hi, and welcome to Happy Fisherman Adventures, episode 15. I hope, I dream, I wish to catch a big fish. And I do it when I can. I'm a happy fisherman. And I do it when I can. I'm a happy fisherman. Since we have done our share on the Port Phillip Bay Snapper Madness, we decided to take a break from it and for a change film for you an episode of Fishing for Trout in High Country. It's first week in December 2021 and our adventure started early Saturday morning and our destination was Mount Buffalo. Yeah, this fishing trip was organized by my friend uh, Brett Dennis and he was a bit nervous at start, just in case we don't catch any fish. To be honest, we didn't care. As long as we're in nature, and catching fish was just a bonus. Talking about nature, how beautiful is Victoria High Country? It really is just magnificent. We were blessed by good weather, and we managed to see quite few locations, few different rivers, and a lot and lots of breathtaking scenery. Since we have quite a bit of great footage of beautiful nature and of course catching fish as well um, we're gonna have to do this in two episodes so today's episode is all about our day one and it's our first location King River let's watch this video enjoy this adventure started early in the morning and we had three and a half hours drive to our destination we were on Hume Highway and our turnoff was the exit for Flowdale so we can enjoy some nice scenery. Lots of things to see here. We passed Goulburn River, then Lake Kildon, and we got to our first destination around 10 a.m. Our first stop, the King River. Brett told us here we should not expect lots of numbers, but definitely there is some nice trout in this river. The water was crystal clear. So we started to get ready. Brett and Will are going to fish this location while me and Mima would be filming. While they got ready to fish, we were putting on fly and mosquito defenders. While Will was getting the widest ready, I found out that Brett does not use them. He prefers his rock fishing shoes. I set the chest camera for Brett and slowly we were ready. The nature here was just breathtaking. Water was flowing quite fast and this river has some big slippery boulders so they had to take extra care walking in it. It didn't take long and Brett was on our first fish. It was a little brown trout. We took a picture and then put him back.
few more casts and Brett got another one. This time a fraction bigger, but still we released it. We spent about an hour here, got about half a dozen brown trout only, but no keepers. The method we fished is casting spinning lures. After observing Will and Brett, it was definitely easier to walk in the river with the rock shoes as the widest were way too slippery. After we spent enough time here, we were on the way to our second destination at Mount Buffalo. This time it was me and Brett walking upstream, while Will decided to stay back and fish with bite from the bank. meters in and Brett hooks on a big brown trout. Just as he was casting, he called it. All right, Timmy, watch this, watch this. I'll get a fish here, watch. Here's my prediction, all right? I got here. Well, look at the size of this one. I told you I gotta get a fish. Slowly, slowly. We did not have the net handy, as we believed in this stretch of water would only be small fish, so he had to somehow drag it on the bank. That was our first keeper and we all got surprised with the size of it. Then we did quite a bit of walk, getting through some fast rapids and shrub and then we got to another pond. Here, Brett gets a nice rainbow trout, which did some acrobatic jumps. Not long after, I managed another one. It was another nice sized rainbow trout that was a keeper. That was my That's first fish breath. of this trip. Oh, it's a lovely fish. How good is that? Timmy, you happy with the first fish? <laughs> That's a ripper. Well done. Fantastic effort. Yeah. 
After that, we were on our way back. Well, we got two more. You got two more? Nice ones, too. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. So who caught them? Oh, we got one each. Who really caught them? Got one each. We're going to see it. <laughs> In the next few minutes, we got Brett to show you the tackle and the lures we use and give you a few tips of how to approach these rivers. Enjoy! Now for today's gear. All right, the rod we use. We use a, uh, I, I like to use a, a six, six foot rod. This one here is called um, a skinny water rod, and the reason it's called skinny water, it's for fishing skinny water like, like this. Um, the line, try to keep it as light as possible. So I, I use six pound line, some people use four, four or six. I don't like to use anything heavier than that. I find the fish you're gonna get in these streams, you're not gonna need anything heavier. And the reel I like to use, some people use a thousand. I use a 2,500 2, Stratic. I mean, it's, it's, it's up to you. I, the reason I like to use the 2500, I think it, the retrieve rate's a bit quicker and I like to, to bring my lures in very, very quickly. Yeah, for women also when I'm fishing, I think the years ago my um, wife bought me a, a pair of uh, rock fishing shoes and uh, I, I don't like rock fishing and um, anyway, I thought it was a waste of money, but I come up to a stream here and I use rock fishing shoes as opposed to waders. And I found that they were so much better. They gave you so much more freedom. Um, waders are so much more cumbersome in waters like this. So I like using the, the rock fishing shoes. And the other benefit is, is, is uh, Tibby highlighted to me was the fact that they're a lot safer with snakes if you've got waders. These ones here, you've probably got a little less chance, but uh, there are not, not that too many snakes in the water. So once you're in the water, I think you're pretty safe. Also, when, when, when we're fishing in trout streams, probably a mistake some people make is you always fish upstream. And the reason we always fish upstream is the trout face up upstream. They're looking for things coming down. So if you're walking upstream, you're behind them. They don't see you as you're approaching. So always walk upstream. Not to say you don't catch a fish downstream, but most of the time you're going to have more success if you walk upstream. One other thing when we're walking up, upstream is we try not to make too much noise. So in waters like this, you, you know, when it's flowing that quick, you're probably, you know, you're not going to make a hell of a lot of noise. But if you've got a flatter screen, we've got to be as quiet as possible. If you're making a, a, a wave or anything like that, the fish can hear that and feel that and sense that. So we've got to make sure that we just slowly approach the hole. One other thing is uh, these rocks. These rocks can be very slippery, and it's probably one of the reasons that I also like to use the rock fishing shoes. On the, on the bottom of those, you have a, a metal thing that helps grip, but these are all very, very slippery. Um, and so be, be careful. In the next video, we're gonna get you familiar with Lake William Hovel. This place, it's great for family day out. Enjoy. Lake William Hovel is an all-time favorite in the King Valley. The lake offers a picturesque recreational area perfect for barbecues, walking and hiking, fishing, canoeing, and four-wheel driving activities. There is a boat ramp which will allow launching two boats at a time and give you access to beautiful fishing grounds. The lake contains trout, redfin and some aquari perch and the size can surprise with trout up to three kilos and some healthy reddies in the warmer months.
right next to the boat ramp, it's a perfect picnic slash swimming ground for you to enjoy. There is an electric barbecue plate with two burners, lots of car park and of course a toilet block. We heard a couple of local boys here. Is fish here often or? Yeah, oh, when we get a chance. When we get a time, yeah. yeah. Sorry, oh. name? Rowan. Rowan and? Tom. Tom? Tom Say hi to everybody watching. Yeah, hey, how you So, up you come up for a fish. Yeah. What do you do, what do you mainly target? Uh, red yeah. Just ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trout. Lures, baits, what? Mainly lures, bit of bait. Bit of bait. And just float around, anchor up, or yeah, just whatever. Trying. Yeah. Best. Too good. Boys, thank you. It's a lovely day. No and you guys enjoy. Do no anything. Cheers. Thanks. See you later. Launching the boat is easy, but four-wheel drive is a must. We ended up staying in Harrietville, which is about 25 kilometers south of Bright. This is a quick video of what you can expect here. Harrietville is a former gold mining town located 25 kilometers south of Bright on the Great Alpine Road. We ended up staying at Harrietville Cabins and Caravan Park, situated at the base of the Alpine National Park on the banks of the Owens River. With the river in your backyard, Bill and Brett took on separate duties. Bill was trying to catch some trout, while Brett was getting ready to clean the catch of the day. The river is a great place to practice your casting or even practice walking on slippery boulders. The trout didn't take long to clean and a little Chiquita had to inspect if Brett is doing a good job. During the green seasons, Harrietville is a perfect place to enjoy the great outdoors. Hikers, cyclists, four-wheel drive enthusiasts and motorbike riders are drawn to the challenging mountain roads and trails in and around the town. Well, as Will finished his duty, it was time to play chase with Chiquita. Since she was eight weeks old, chasing is her favorite game.
to conclude this video, Harrietville is a place you should have on your to-do list. We hope you enjoyed our episode and we will see you next week. Next week we're gonna show you the part two of this episode which is day two of our adventure and it's fishing at Owens River, Buckland River, the swimming hole, um, crossing some water crossing, some fall driving and some beautiful beautiful nature. I'll see you then. I hope, I dream, I wish to catch a big fish. I do it when I can I'm a happy fisherman And I do it when I can I'm a happy fisherman